you know, I feel that the technology has the potential to make us better uh, artists in that way, that we're more, it's putting more variables on our radar. But it's also got its kind of unique quirks, right? You have to overcompensate. You have to treat it almost like a different instrument. Welcome back to this third part of the Organist Launchpad video about the virtual organ. As a teacher, one of the things that fascinates me most about organ is its unique ability to affect change in musicians, in awareness, in the way organ challenges musicians physically, in the way organ challenges musicians cognitively. So the virtual technology allows us to explore that, those attributes of performing at the organ from the standpoint of multiple types of instruments, multiple types of soundscapes, multiple types of acoustic spaces, allows us to explore in virtual form the fact that spaces in which we play are all different. Instruments we play are all different. So we can apply what we learn from the experience of hearing what comes from the input that we put towards the instrument to inform our thinking about creative expression. Okay, thanks for agreeing to do this. I'm excited to see what your impressions are. Why don't you just dive in? Okay. Um, very light. Uh -huh. uh, I feel like usually when I play this kind of music, it's on often like a mechanical instrument coupled together, so way lighter than what I was expecting. Okay, yeah. So there's a there's a feedback loop that you're getting. Both some of it has to do with the technology, some of it has to do with the actual controller that we're using. So mm -hmm. there's always this question of what is the hardware that I'm using, and what is the software. So here we have a light MIDI controller, so the keys are very light. That's separate from the actual interface. Okay. Well, it is the interface, but it's separate from the actual platform. So what you're describing is you're used to this kind of gravitas, this sort of sense of a full plano, a rich sound in the plano. You've chosen this great plano registration on this instrument. Um, so you're trying to create sound, right? So if I asked you, how would you create more sound? out of the instrument now? What, what would you do? Just as a, a kind of a performance practice. Oh, without bender. adding more stops Yeah, or without adding more stops, okay. how would you try to build the richness of the sound of the instrument? So what, what, what variables do you think you could play around with? Um, I could just have more weight, maybe mm -hmm. not like, like with my release. I could release a bit slower maybe. Slower release. It might be a later release, yes. right? It might impact your tempo, so you're giving the instrument time to catch up to you. Yes, right? you're yes. giving the tech time to catch up. You're giving, you're giving more time, letting some of that, those variables, kind of absorb into the music. So why don't we try it? Okay. Try that. Try to get a richer sound. Okay. It does, and there's so much acoustic. Ah, so you're noticing the space. Yeah. This is key, right? So the space is part of the instrument, right? <clears throat> this is how the samples are conceived, but it's also how organ is conceived, right? That the organ is built in the space, it makes us think about the space and interact with it. So we play the space yeah. as well as the instrument. Okay, so you wanted a more animated tempo. Mm -hmm. So why don't you try to restore that? That was an interpretive decision that you wanted. So let's give that back, right? Let's let's get closer to that energy that you, okay. that you wanted. So try getting the tempo faster, but try engaging, engaging a little bit more with okay. the action so that you get richness and velocity. Okay.
Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. It's a big change. What are your impressions? Um, it's just so bizarre having such an acoustic, but like being <laughs> in this space, I guess. Yeah, it's a virtual. Yeah, it, it feels like a little brain game almost. So say more about that. That's really cool. Well, because every time like I can hear the acoustic, and I feel like if I chose that tempo in such an acoustic, it would get really muddy, actually. Mm -hmm. So I think that I probably should just choose to interpret it with a slower tempo if I were playing in such a like loud, echoey acoustic. I don't I know. So, and what about your idea of imagining the space around you? So does it feed anything for you <clears throat> in terms of imagination? Yeah, it's kind of funny. I mean, I'm playing on this, but in my mind's eye, I'm in this gigantic cathedral on this gigantic instrument. Aha. Like, it's just kind of funny. So in one of your performance, public performance, and you're, and you're performing on a big instrument, you've played lots of these big instruments. Do you ever do that? Do you imagine space when you're playing an acoustic instrument in a big space, or do you find that you're more responding to what's there? Um, I think a mixture of both. I think often I am just responding, mm -hmm. but when I'm registering, I do try to imagine how it blends in the space. Hmm. So, see, one of the things that fascinates me about this tech Technology is in how it kind of has the potential to feed our imagination and to feed our imagination to intend what we're doing when we perform. So that we create an intention of the kind of expanse and the richness in the sound and the space of the music. And so we intend that before we do anything, right? And then we intend it into what we do in our touch and our timing and articulation, how we register the piece. So it isn't simply just playing. It's coming up with a concept of what we want to hear, no matter what space we're in. So I think that's a really good segue now to hop over here okay. and to play an acoustic instrument where we don't have that, that acoustic generated and uh, working with this very dry room. Um, and seeing what happens. So just play what you'd normally do, sort of sit down and play this organ, a small okay. tracker, in a in a in a small room See like now I feel that this faster tempo works because of the lack of acoustic I guess Okay so so it's impacted your interpretation in terms of giving you a sense that you can play with more agility, more speed. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And also, I mean, it just feels very different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's what I play I'm expecting to hear, I guess. Okay. Unlike with the Hauptwerk where I was not, I did not know what to expect. Right, so you're uh, more used to this this feedback loop, is mm -hmm. giving you more of what you're, expect more of what you're used to yes. experiencing. So what, ha would I, what would you do if I asked you to try to create that same feeling of expanse and space on this instrument? Hmm. Rather than, so I, I get what you're saying, and I think that's a good call, right? We want to adapt our performance practice to the space that we're in. So we don't want to try to make a small room sound like a basilica. Mm -hmm. But maybe there's a middle ground there. What if we could make this space sound bigger? Mm. Is there anything that you think you might have discovered playing that virtual instrument that could inform how you approach this to try to make this room sound less small? So I'm, that's, je, je vous lance le défi. So <laughs> I'm going to ask you to try to play this now, thinking about what you just experienced okay. in, these two, in these two trials but to then try to make this room sound larger. Okay, okay, let me see. OK, 
Okay, I thought that was successful. Yeah, I feel like I just tried to, you know, adjust just like how I adjusted with the hub jerk. What did you, how did you do that? Um, I imagined the space and I imagined that I was filling the entire, this entire room with sound, I guess. And I think I tried to make my playing a little bit heavier and attack a little, I mean, release a little bit later. Later release. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about articulation. So let's jump back over here. So I think there's this tendency very often, especially with certain approaches to performance, that we think of articulation as a binary. We think of it as something that's there or something that's not there. And I think one of the beautiful things about mechanical acoustic instruments, like what you just played here, is that we get more of a sense of the variability uh, the effect of variable sizes of articulation. So we play with the timing of the release, but we also play with the size of the release. Mm -hmm. So the criticism that's often levied with technology, with virtual technology is, well, it's on or it's off. It's a typewriter, it's on or it's off. But the thing about the sampling is that we have in, in these very sophisticated samples, sometimes 10 or more release samples. So they've sampled the various kinds of releases that the instruments get. Uh, that they produce, and so uh, the software then will choose them randomly. So you get, the, there's a lot of focus on the experience for the organist of experiencing that as a real instrument that is more kind of organic, but it also lets you play around with the technology in terms of exactly this uh, variable of articulation size and have it impact the outcome in a very palpable way. So could you try this once again? And now think about articulation size. Okay. So, so maybe experiment with a, a, a smaller range of articulation size. So okay. the, the, uh, the, the number of articulations will be the same. Okay. But maybe you're going to try to cover them so we don't notice them as much and, okay. see, and see what happens. Okay. That's fine. Now, try slurring some things. So okay. sometimes you're going to need to maybe over slur mm -hmm. where on an acoustic instrument you wouldn't. So this idea of clarity that comes from the separation, that flutter in the hand mm -hmm. that gets the energy in the rhythm is maybe producing a chop, a kind of a choppy effect. I see your response to that. Mm -hmm. sort of like, oh. Yeah. So then you might need to adapt a little bit and over slur some things more than you might otherwise. Okay, yes. Let's try that. Okay. So slur some stuff. Be more generous in gluing stuff together. Okay. Keys, we're out of keys. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, what I hear mean? that. I think that sounds so cool. I would like to have like more time to like play with it and figure out what works best and everything. And every sample set you play has a different range of sensibilities and quirks, just like every instrument does. Mm -hmm. um, but the point is that there's something valuable here in in the in the feedback that it's generating. And I think I'm I'm I think I'd like to ask you if you if you feel that this kind of experience might impact how you interact with an acoustic instrument. Yeah, I think definitely. I think that this kind of experience, well, I mean, first of all, is such a great learning tool to learn how different organs around the world act hmm. and are. But I think that just having to imagine the space is a new concept for me that I will take to acoustic instruments. Cool, so I, th I think it, it, it I, I, you know, I feel that the technology has the potential to make us better uh, artists in that way. That we're more—it's putting more variables on our radar. 
but it's also God has kind of unique quirks, right? You have to overcompensate. You have to treat it almost like a different instrument. It's its own thing. Mm -hmm. um, you need to slur stuff, but you slur stuff, but you still get articulation. You still get texture in the rhythm from the attack, mm -hmm. even with an absolute slur in your hand. So that's one of the things that you don't really get, even on a digital organ. Um, so the attack samples are firing in the software, mm -hmm. giving you energy that would be coming from your hand if you were playing a tracker and playing with that energy, but you have to adapt in a way that's very, very soft in the hand. But the outcome is pretty compelling. It's cool. And it was a very different effect in terms of the texture and the sound that you yeah, it was really cool. Thank, thank you so much. It's thank been you. really great working with you. I appreciate your insights. Yeah, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. This is great. From this standpoint, I suggest that we consider virtual instruments need to have their own performance practice, one that is informed by the individual quirks, perhaps limitations of the sample set we may be dealing with, that could involve a limited number of samples, a limited uh, degree of variety in that sample set, perhaps an element of latency in our software that might be mediated through the processing speed of the computer that we're hooked up to. All of those things are simply variables, like with any instrument that we respond to, that we adapt to. And that'll impact our timing as we play a piece of music. It'll impact our articulation. Where do we make articulations? How many of them do we make? How big do they need to be? Do we need to vary all of those variables to one degree or another? You can see with Maria as she plays this piece of Bach, a transformation in her awareness that unfolds before our eyes as she realizes what's coming out of the instrument, being specifically challenged to explore and manipulate attributes of her performance practice in order to create an outcome, a more specific outcome, one that broadens the sound, one that is more generous with time, one that creates an awareness of the physical space that encapsulates the sound, both inside the organ, but also in the space that the technology has been installed. All of those things build stronger awareness. This is a moment, what we see happening, is a moment where an artist is becoming stronger. A strong artist is becoming stronger and more aware. And you can see that she acknowledges that, she sees that, she reacts to it. It triggers curiosity. How did that happen? Hmm. It triggers joy. We're smiling, we're laughing, we feel motivated. It triggers passion. It reconnects us to the reasons that we became organists. Thank you for joining me for this Organist Launchpad presentation. I hope I've given you some food for thought, some ideas to reflect on, and some ways that you can approach your own work or your students or the people you work with, the people you care about, to invite them into a space of creative expression facilitated with this tool, but really to use this as a launch pad for creative expression with any tool. One of the beautiful things about this technology is that it models processes that can unfold in any environment, in the acoustic environment. So we don't really think about the virtual technology as a way to improve or inform or deepen our understanding of how we approach a mechanical action, but it very much can because of the way it shifts our attention because of the way it shifts our priorities and what we're trying to accomplish and how it builds our sensitivity, how it builds our receptivity. So I hope you've enjoyed this journey into these ideas. I hope they challenge you and I hope that you don't hesitate to reach to me personally if there's any aspect of this you'd like to discuss. Thanks for your time.